Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and that is the wrong scene. That's the one that I wanted. Hello, hello, hope you're all good. Hope you're having a fantastic week so far. Tonight, we are going to be doing some Le Mans Ultimate, taking a look at the game which has just released on Early Access earlier on today at 12pm UK time. And uh, now is obviously my first proper chance to... Uh, Give it a real good go. I will admit, I was playing around uh, with the game back uh, back during my lunch break, filling with some sweat settings and just kind of dial, trying to dial the uh, try to dial the game in a little bit. <clears throat> um, but tonight is our first proper look at the actual title, see how it plays, and uh, kind of give you the feedback as to uh, what I think of the game for me sim racing game developers point of view because yes I uh, do work on a current in progress currently being developed yeah developed sim racing title obviously it's not this um, and nor can I disclose what it is actually at the moment and in the past worked on project cars 2 project cars 3 and then project cars 4 before it got cancelled back at Slightly Mad Studios. So coming at it from that kind of perspective will be a little bit interesting just to see uh, how good their uh, their game development is. Right, let's go ahead and actually get in game. So here we are and rather conveniently my webcam goes and blocks a whole bunch of features here but uh, it's good to say that the the menus here in, uh, in LMU are relatively relatively uh relatively simple and easy to understand which is uh which is quite nice and uh paolo no i am not a uh, i'm not a programmer i am a games designer so uh my job is to basically think of cool ideas game modes features design how exactly we want them to work uh write up all the game design documentation for that and provide all that uh useful info to the programmers and coders and the ui artists and they go and put it all in the game and it's obviously our job to do feedback loops to um, make sure that what they've put in is what we wanted um, and basically try and provide best experience for the player. Uh, it does touch on various all sorts of areas um, from the UI to the game modes to doing stuff so like the replay cameras I was involved with that uh, back in Project Cars 2-3 um, as well as AI racing lines, um, the career mode, designing that, creating all the events, invitational events. Uh, I was the one who created all the community events in Project Cars 2 and 3. Um, rivals events, they were known as in Project Cars 3. Um, and obviously getting those all up on the server and working along with uh, the server technicians to make sure that all that stuff gets actually pushed to the game and uh, out there for you players to experience and play. But uh, yeah, here we are on the main menu. Now this is early access. I will put that out there now and let's quickly talk about the game development kind of cycle a little bit because I've seen a few various opinions and reviews going around and comments from players on the uh, Le Mans Ultimate Discord and kind of Reddit and other places within the sim community that they are expecting way more than what a early access title will deliver. Um, basically what we've got is a snippet of what the developers have produced so far. This isn't everything that the developers have worked on and created so far. It is going to be a playable version or snapshot of the game. Now, obviously you've got your usual development. We all know the terms alpha and beta. Alpha traditionally within the game's uh, kind of development scene typically means that whatever feature it is that you're working on is in the game. Uh, all the features are complete and you've had some balancing uh, put in. So take, for example, the race weekend feature. When we're in alpha, everything that should be there in terms of the game design should be for that specific feature is in there. It should be feature complete. There should be at least some balancing passes. There will be bugs. There will be issues. There will be further balancing to uh, make. And obviously there'll be further tweaks to UI improvements polish, all that sort of thing. But that all comes in beta. Uh, beta is very much the kind of the 
last sort of like bug polishing phase effectively and uh making sure that there's no game breaking bugs and when we talk about game breaking bugs we mean things that actually physically break the game that will stop the player from progressing any any further and just like completely breaking the game mode like all the settings are wrong and everything else like that um so when it comes to early access what we're going to find is a snippet of the actual game and then the features that we do have are going to be in various different states. Some things will kind of be in beta or near enough done and polished. Um, other things will kind of be more alpha or just going in um, and wanting feedback and testing uh, from the devs by the players. Uh, as obviously, if you've got a team of 20, 30 odd developers with their own PCs, they can only test 30 odd combinations um, with various pieces of hardware so putting it out for early access obviously allows for a much wider variety of hardware setups to actually come into play you get more feedback you get a hell of a lot more data um, than what the developers can test with because they're going to be limited on the amount of equipment the pcs the hardware that they're going to have in those pcs um, so they can't test absolutely everything i know we kind of get the brunt of it as players uh, which is unfortunate but that's how things are and obviously with the whole msg thing i imagine that this is probably a way for them to get a little bit of funding in as they've been struggling especially the last couple of quarters um with their financial situation and obviously to try and keep this game alive which is probably their best bet at keeping studio 397 and msg uh alive and kicking this is an opportunity for them to get a little bit of development cash in to continue development and continue polishing the game further. You will see issues, bugs, performance issues here in this, but from what I've tested so far, initial uh, impressions are quite promising. It's good to see a few of you here in chat already. Three Trees, thank you very much. It was a good uh, race yesterday and shame you missed the live stream, but uh, glad you managed to catch up with it as well. And Courtney, does Simha work with this game? Uh, I am not entirely sure myself. I am running a Moza R12 with the KS steering wheel. Um, I don't use SimHub in any of my other sim racing titles, so I can't really speak um, from personal experience here. Uh, I have seen people asking about it on the uh, Le Mans Ultimate Discord, possibly also their Reddit as well, but I personally can't help you there. Sorry about that. But yes, so what have we got here? We've got Race Weekend. We've got an online mode, which is hidden behind my webcam. My profile, where <clears throat> you'll see some various little bits and bobs. It's all very, very, as you can see, very bare bones at the moment. Matt House, thank you very much for subscribing. Much appreciated. Do say hi if you're here in the chat. Um, and then various stats. But as you can see, I've not really actually done anything properly as of yet. This is all in relation to online by the looks of things. So, yeah. I've not tried online yet. Uh, we got option for credits, which we all know what that's going to be. Settings, as you can see, some reasonable amount of polish to uh, some menus here uh, at the moment. But there's a whole bunch of settings here. Some of these, or a lot of these, are quite heavily assists uh, focused. So obviously catering to newer, lesser experienced players. And then there's a few other bits and bobs with regards to like damage, AI strength. So we've left this on all, all the defaults, basically. Um, there's a few things that I turned off in terms of uh, the assists in here. Uh, instant replay, I haven't adjusted any of this sort of stuff. Obviously controls, set all that up. Straight away, it did detect my pedals and also the Moza wheelbase uh, without me having to really do anything. I did have to remap. My controls, uh, steer left and right were fine, but the throttle, brake, clutch, I needed to adjust those and then I uh, just kind of went through all the car controls and everything else like that. There's a whole bunch of various different settings here. A lot of them are probably very, very similar to R-Factor 2 if you've uh, if you've played with those. And then we've got a bunch of calibration options here as well. I haven't actually set anything up with regards to the steering wheel, but when it comes to the throttle, brake and also clutch i have adjusted the sensitivity setting uh these were previously on 100 as default i've gone and dropped these down to 84 55 and 65 for throttle brake clutch respectively and then a bunch of steering settings not entirely sure why um there is 
head motion stuff here tied to uh, the wheel settings. I would have thought that would kind of be in graphics where some of the other head motion related stuff can be found. So some slight oddities here in the UI, but these are all things that they can quite easily fix. They just need to move stuff around, um, which doesn't take too long and shouldn't really break break anything which is good and then a whole bunch of force feedback stuff there is some new settings here compared to r factor 2 i did go and have a, a little bit of a comparison um and i tried to kind of dial this into something that feels relatively good it feels like this is a little bit too high because there's a little bit too much damping going on um but we'll talk about the force feedback a little bit later and some of the uh some of the help text that's here on the left hand side isn't there for every single feature and then it's same for some features, even though the, the main header changes. You can obviously assign stuff to the keyboard. But yeah, graphic settings, all relatively normal as standard, as you can see. And then a bunch of visual stuff here as well, in terms of lock and horizon, stuff like that. And then sound settings, turn the UI music off, because uh, we don't need that. I don't want to be getting uh, any copyright strikes. And a bunch of other settings here as well so that's that's the main look at the uh the options let's go ahead and do some driving now let's go ahead and jump into the race weekend mode i feel like we're gonna have to go to le mans we have to start off at le mans the big boy and then i'm gonna drive the gte car i'm gonna start off with this a lot of people are going and jump straight into the hype cars maybe the p2s but let's go gte and let's take good old rexy who've done a little bit of uh driving with uh the porsche here already but we got the Aston Martin got the Corvettes we got the Ferraris and it looks like all the uh, main official liveries and stuff here that race throughout the WE season are here in the game as well possibly some also fictional ones as there are uh, quite a lot of liveries uh, on offer here in this in this game so here we are into the Porsches GR Racing there. Obviously the Iron Dames. Two cars listed there. And then the Iron Lynx cars. Then Rexy. And a bunch of others as well. Sort of Corvettes. How many Corvettes have we got? Just the two Corvettes. And there's a, a bunch of Ferraris. But all the, uh, all the cars that were in the WEC season uh, for 2023 are here. Which is good to see. But as I said, maybe some uh, some new ones. The Heart of Racing uh, livery there, looking very very nice. But just let's go and grab Rexy and let's drive them. Icy Boy asking, will this game be available on Xbox? Not entirely sure at this point. The developers have said that they would like to bring it to console at some stage, but they are focusing on PC first. So there's a chance that it will come to PlayStation, Xbox later on down the line. But at the moment, there's no real set concrete plans or date as to when that may be. So here we can finally configure the last bunch of things. I'm not going to do a 12-hour uh, a race. That would be ridiculous. You can turn the classes on and off here. All relatively uh, quite easy UI uh, to effectively interact with. You can even go into uh, the individual options. And adjust, adjust things so we've got all the opponent settings here obviously tire wear fuel usage all their sets are realistic there's all the assists choose stuff with regards to the sessions as to how long they are we'll leave that at one hour let's uh, go a little bit earlier in the morning 6 30 don't want this a private practice so we want to uh, have all the other cars and then you've got some real road stuff there which is uh their version of, uh, I guess, the live track and the weather system. Here you can see you can uh, program various different defaults and kind of customize your own. It's all really quite powerful stuff uh, for the actual various sessions. It needs to split between practice, qualifying, and race. And there's a bunch of advanced stuff here as well. Let's go ahead and put that time scale to 10 times, make things go a little bit quicker, and uh, leave all that stuff. Nicely as default. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into uh, jump into the action. Now, one of the things that I have noticed 
from my time playing and testing a little bit earlier is that the load times are quite long the first time that you go into a track. Once you're actually in and kind of all the assets, shaders and everything else like that has been loaded, they've been stored on your and created on your system, um, it uses some kind of quite clever caching system. So once it's kind of done it once, things are quicker loading in uh, second, third, fourth consecutive times after that. So there might be a little bit of a wait here, but uh, yeah, it's not going to be as long as the uh, the very, very first first time that I loaded into the circuit. The other circuit that I've driven on is uh, Algarve as well, which I will uh, show a little bit later on. Very, very nice track. Really, really glad to see that uh, Algarve Portimao, Portimao is uh, represented here in the game. Obviously, it was raced on last year um, in the WEC calendar. But uh, it's a fantastic track with some great undulations and elevation changes, some quite tricky and technical corners, and uh, it's great for uh, multi-class racing as well. But uh, we'll be diving in with this with this practice session. So we'll have uh, other cars with us, all three classes. It'll be uh, good to see how the AI actually handles compared to uh, compared to us. Hello, Matt. Thank you very much for subscribing earlier, mate. Much appreciated. Downloading the game, keep up the good work you do, and nice to see another Bentley driver on ACC. Yeah. A lot of fun driving the Bentley. Really, really like the car. It's um it's quick with the uh with the BOP. It feels much, much nicer to drive with the uh with the weight taken out of it. So uh, that I'm pleased pleased about. And I was fairly happy with my result last night. It would have been nice if um I qualified a little bit better, but uh Otherwise, completely pretty pleased with my uh, race performance. Right, here we go. So this is your in garage menu. Jump to the next session if you want. We can jump to a spectator mode, or we can start driving. I think uh, that's more kind of a an actual replay than anything. And obviously, we've got summaries here on the left hand side. We can go into the setup of the car. These menus do seem to be relatively slow. Um, once you're actually kind of in the in the game menu, it is a known issue, so it is something that uh, they are going to be working on. But we've got a tire management screen here, so we can choose soft, medium, hard, or wet tire compounds, and a car setup tab. There is some initial stuff that we can uh, alter and change. Which we might skip in a minute if it's uh, really taking quite a while to uh, actually get sorted. Which it looks like it is. So let's go ahead and uh, actually jump out on track instead. Yeah, unfortunately this is where the uh, early access is really kind of showing itself. The, uh, the menus, mainly the pause menu and this menu here, do seem to be really quite slow. As I said, it is a known issue. The devs are working on it. Something to do with uh, Windows 11, even though I'm running Windows 10, personally. Um, but hopefully they'll get a fix out for it fairly soon in the coming days. As uh, this is early access, so they can uh, update the game quite frequently. Especially as it is only on PC. It does make it a whole lot easier to actually get stuff updated and out onto the circuit. I'm still sat here in the menu. I've got 11 FPS. Here we go. Hopefully it'll sort itself out. Is everything okay on the stream? I am getting very slight encoder issues that's coming up at the moment. And uh, errors, but we'll get ourselves out onto the track, so Fire up the ignition, fire up the car. Things sound not overly great at the moment, but uh, let's pause the music and get out on track. And hopefully the uh, frame rate will sort itself out. It's affecting my webcam as well. Okay. That's good to know. And yeah, from my experience earlier, it was... Uh, in some issues, but uh, it seems to be really, really quite slow at the moment. So let's uh, actually go and pull over to the side of the circuit. We'll jump back to uh, jump back to the garage. We'll 
gonna try it again. Choppy for you guys as well. Okay. That is good to know. I'm seeing stuff on my end that's showing that it's really quite bad. Alright, tell you what. Let's go back to the main menu. Let's try a different track initially. Hopefully, the uh, encoder issues will uh, sort themselves out in just a moment. It's tanking his stream as well. Okay, good to know. All right. Hopefully, things will improve a little bit here. Now that we've gone back to the main menu, what I will do actually is just for the sake of it, I'll uh, close the game down and uh, start it up again. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that will improve things. So I'll bring the music back up again. Sorry about this, guys. The unfortunate things of uh, early access titles. Do you think the game development will get smoother with AI? It sucks to see devs take years off to make one title where back in the day it took men two years sometimes to release the title. Just curious. Uh, a lot of it is to do with budgets and kind of how games are obviously now a hell of a lot more advanced than they were uh, way back. Way back in the day. Is things looking any smoother at all here now? Or are things still very, very stuttery? It looks like one of my messages has cleared with regards to the stutteriness. So, let's uh, go ahead as we're now back into the game. Let's actually uh, go ahead and do our guard rather than uh, rather than Lamont because uh, Lamont is quite a taxing one. And yeah, it's probably uh, thanking it. But with the AI thing, yes, certainly. It is helping in some ways uh, with regards to, uh, I guess, generating worlds, levels, maps, that sort of thing. As you've seen with uh, the Unreal Engine, some of their demos that come out, some of the AI tech behind that is really, really impressive and obviously makes it very, very quick uh, in order to produce things. But other things it may cause issues you're always going to need that human element i think so uh while some things may speed up there will be others that uh that won't and kind of remain as they are but yeah it's probably uh doing stuff back to normal okay thank you very much guys cheers for the uh confirmation and hello rami boo how are you doing good sir Uh, Benjamin, that is a good question. Do you think it'll be worth getting now, or do you want to wait a few days for patches to come out? Uh, the thing is, it's going to increase in price uh, as it goes and continues through its development. At the moment, the price that it's at now is going to be the cheapest uh, that it will be. So, it's hard to say. If you can put up with some of the performance issues and things like that, I think it's kind of exasperated and made worse by the fact that I'm trying to stream because things weren't quite this bad or as difficult earlier. Yes, there was some frame rate stutters and things like that um, whilst things were loading and being cached in. But uh, generally, for the most part, the game was relatively playable. So I'm getting like 40 odd frames showing now. Showing 27. Hopefully the uh, performance will improve a little bit. I might need to turn some of the uh, the graphic settings down. Let's uh, let's go on track again and see. See how well this goes. Almost colliding the uh, Iron Lynx Porsche there. Graphics are okay. 
I've got them uh, effectively on the on the high preset, and there's nothing that kind of really impresses me as of yet. This is looking a lot more smoother now. There we go, 100 frames. I've seen uh, Jardier stream, for example, and that was looking pretty nice. And uh, likewise with Jimmy Broadbent's uh, video that he did and released midday. It's looking fairly good there. One thing that I've uh, noted from my testing earlier is... Uh, on a lot of the tracks, I think Le Mans was about the only one that I tested where you actually start off with uh, warm tyres. As you can see down on the bottom left, tyres start off very, very cold. So uh, the first few laps, bringing them up to temperature is uh, going to be pretty important. That's quite the FPS drop there. There we go, we'll stop the music. So you can hear the game in all its glory. And yeah, the frame rate does certainly drop in and around the uh, start finish straight in the pits here, but it will clear again once we get out the other side of that. Was had to turn off afterburner. That's probably a bunch of stuff that uh, I have running in the background that I probably need to turn off to uh, improve frame rates. We've got two LMP2s behind us here. Now, as I mentioned, AI is up. Default 100% difficulty. From what I've seen, they've been uh, they've been pretty good so far. I think it's uh, relatively similar to uh, R Factor 2. I mean, overall, the game kind of feels fairly similar to. Uh, R Factor 2 as well, in terms of initial impressions. So tyres up to nearing 60 odd degrees now. Probably start to push a little bit more. <laughs> Go sound like a moon cow. Yeah. I heard uh, Jardier saying that he really liked the curb sounds. They're all right. They're. One of the things that kind of annoys me a little bit about uh, some simulators and some racing games is that they they do the sound from the source. So, uh, I kind of what I mean by that is, for example, curb sounds, they do the sound of the tyre running over the curb. Or if it's running, you know, on a wet track surface, they do, you know, the kind of the spray coming from underneath the tyre. On that wet surface, likewise, if you go through dirt or leaves, you kind of, or like you run over grass, you hear the grass and the leaves and stuff crunching underneath the tyre, rather than actually what you would hear if you were sat in the cabin or the cockpit of a car. In the sense that 
should be hearing the entire kind of car violently shake and vibrate from running over the curbs. Or I should be hearing the water on the underside of the car and in the, uh, the wheel wells likewise running over grass and dirt and stuff. You should be hearing all the stones and debris hitting the underside and the uh, the wheel wells of the car. Stuff that you would hear from internally rather than stuff that you would actually never hear if you were sat inside the car here as a uh, Toyota hypercar. Being uh, quite patient sitting behind us there. Other sounds are pretty good though. Like, This sounds uh, pretty decent in terms of its overall handling. Tyres sound pretty good. Hearing other cars and kind of 3D spatial sound is uh, also pretty nice. Just wish I could feel the tyres through the uh, the force feedback a little bit better. Kind of leans more towards vibration than uh, smooth talk in terms of communicating what the tyres are doing with grip and that sort of stuff. Kind of fairly similar to. Uh, R Factor 2, but it's not horrendous. Nice little brake screw there. Yeah, the tyre's moving around a little bit. Hey Zero, I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? Oh, again, some frame rate start of that. Right, it's starting to get a little bit busier out on track. MP2 sounds cool there to the left. <laughs> You're convinced? <laughs> yeah, the performance issues will, will improve. Things that are fixable. In terms of immersion though, it's pretty good. Like the soundscape is really nice. The lighting looks looks pretty good. It just um I think just need to work on some of the graphic settings just to sharpen things up a little bit. Kind of improved textures and lords. As you can see, AI is pretty decent as well, though uh, they're not leaving me an overly uh, huge amount of room there. No, there we go. Bit of damage taken off the rear wing of the uh, the LMP2 in front. Let's see how the AI handles that coming into the next braking zone. Whether uh, they get loose and screwy or whether they're quite planted, which it looks to be the latter typical AI things, it's quite difficult to make them uh, 
have similar damage effects to uh, players at times because the yeah, AI do have a, uh, a very good and extreme sense of being able to collect and gather up the card once uh, they run wide. There it is. Being hip checked out the way there by the, uh, the Toyota. Not too much of an issue with the uh, with the physics. I mean, it's quite fun and an engaging drive. I'd say it's relatively realistic as well. As I said, I wish there was more uh, feel in terms of tire slip coming through the force feedback and. Uh, does take a little bit of fiddling with the controller settings to uh, get a much better feel on the uh, on the pedals and brakes because the brake was way too sensitive when I first got in. It was very very easy to uh, lock up the car, and I was barely kind of pressing the pedal at all. Whereas uh, now it feels much better I can use a lot more range on the uh, in the pedal and it feels more realistic as I've dropped the sensitivity of it down hello Graham uh, Spencer no it's not it's the uh, same engine as uh, R Factor 2 is it the Izzy engine that they're on and yes this is PC only for the moment Try and catch up with the track a little bit. Any other game, console games like uh, PC2? Not at the moment. Obviously, you got ACC. Oh, that LMP2 sounds so good on the overrun. And they have a decent racing line coming off the exit of uh, that turn three there. Ah, for this car and track combo. I didn't read the entire comment or question. Uh, no, I think PC2 was the only one. Uh, eight tracks, I believe, crash override. So content-wise, they've actually got the full 2023 season there. It's just light on game modes. Oh, the fan wall sounds good, as it does in real life. Yeah, all the cars and tracks from the uh, 2023 WE season were there. The only car that is uh, is actually missing is the uh, the Garage 56 NASCAR that ran at Le Mans. That was the only one that, uh, <clears throat> as far as I know, hasn't made it to the game, but all the others have. Oh, two hypercars going side by side. That's cool. This is uh, us well out wide. has just come out the pit lane. Let me run. Hey, Christian. How's it going, buddy? Locking up the inside front a little bit there. This is a pretty cool experience. What I'm going to do is, uh... Oh, holy noise. Jump us back to the garage. Feel less. Go 
come on, give us all our standings and everything else like that. Yep, all the menu options are slowly coming back. So what I want to do is uh, is jump to qualifying. Here we go. Start next session. <laughs> Away goes all the uh, all the all the noise. Hey, Astobo, how are you doing, bud? Is it going to load? Or is it, uh... Has it crashed? Maybe it crashed. Yeah, Benjamin, there's uh, various pieces of information that uh, either is missing and is coming, or... It's uh, it's not there by choice. You do get the inner, middle, and outer uh, tire temps in the car setup screen, but uh, obviously not whilst on track. And that's obviously a game design decision because they don't usually get those sort of readings uh, on circuit. They just kind of whilst they're out on track, they just kind of you probably get a sensor in the core uh, of the tire that gives them a a core temp reading. And then uh, I think this is uh, this has crashed on us here, so bear with me one second whilst we cool the game, start it back up once again. Oh no, here we go. Let's come back to life. Just as I say all that. All right. Uh, shall we do a qualifying session, or shall we just jump straight back in? Uh, and go straight to the race. What do you guys reckon? What do you guys vote? <clears throat> but yeah, as I was saying, there will obviously be tyre or temperature sensors in the core of the tyre, which um, goes on the dash and obviously you get telemetry readings and stuff for. But uh, they won't get the actual inner, outer, or middle temperatures until they go back to the pit lane and uh, an engineer can put the probe on on the surface of the tire those uh, those various spots and yep exploring new sims was you're going back to the old ones i know i saw you and uh cluck discussing about uh the project cars 2 event on sunday it's pretty cool oh what is going on here This seems to be really, really slow, so I am going to... Kill the game and restart it. You guys want me to do qualifying? Okay, cool. Well, what I'll do is I'll restart it again. I'll turn practice off and we'll go straight into the qualifying session. So you guys can uh, see what the uh, AI quality speed is like. And yeah, Christian, you should uh, come join us on the PC. <clears throat> there you go. So you can see the uh, the little intro video. Race weekend. Shall we do a different track other than Algarve, or shall we stick to Algarve? We've got a choice of Sebring. We've got Spa. Obviously, Le Mans. We've got Monza. Fuji. And Bahrain. So we've got seven circuits in total. Not eight. Seven circuits. And Christian, yes, the uh, game came out in uh, early access uh, earlier on this afternoon. Uh, midday, in fact. So it's now available for purchase on uh, on Steam. But yeah, let us know which circuit you want us to do, and uh, we shall jump on in. Let's 
Sebring's always a good track. Nice fun with the bumps. Obviously, I've driven Portimo a fair bit. I haven't driven uh, Spa in this game as of yet. And it is the updated uh, 2023 version of the circuit as well. Obviously, I've done a bit of uh, driving around Le Mans. That's pretty good fun. Haven't done Monza. Oof, pardon me. Which could be interesting. As Mike Fuji. And then Bahrain might be a cool one as well. Bahrain's a good circuit. <clears throat> uh, how many circuits will be in the final release? Well, obviously they've got all the circuits that were in the 2023 season. Uh, I imagine they'll do an update with the 2024 cars and tracks. So, I can't remember how many uh, how many circuits there are on the, uh, the 2024 season calendar. So we may get some additional ones. Um, we shall see. It'll be interesting to see how they handle the kind of the 2023 season and the 2024 season. Whether they'll make them two separate kind of entities or parts to the game. Or whether they'll kind of uh, mix them all. But yeah, pick, pick your circuit, guys. What what should we do? Bahrain, Sebring, Algar, Spa, Le Mans, Monza, or Fuji? Quickly make a choice and uh, do a quick vote, and we'll uh, we'll jump in and we'll do that. In the meantime, what I might do is turn some of these details down a little bit. Usually a good one to turn down. Turn that down. That down. So we've got one vote for Le Mans, one vote for Fuji, one vote for Bahrain. Turn that down. Three trees is all about the F1 testing. Also, the uh, T-shirt works very, very nicely there with the uh, the heart rate with the F1 car in the middle. Right, I believe the best thing to do when you uh, go and change the uh, graphic settings is to uh, turn stuff off. We've got two votes for Fuji. Spa, Fuji wins. Fuji it is. Right. I'm going to very quickly restart the game again. Just to avoid any potential issues. Hey, look at that. A really, really nice Ferrari. It's last year's one, though. It's not uh, this year's. Love their apples. And, uh, yeah, Astor is calling it. Fuji wins. <clears throat> So here you go. Now you get to see all the splash screens and everything loading up. There's a little intro video which you can skip as soon as you press some kind of button and you get to this screen. Miami, we're in. Right. Uh, what car class are we doing? We could do hypercar, we could do LMP2, or we can do GTE. Quickly vote. Uh, Wesley, I think it's down to the circuit. So I think Le Mans has the full 59. Don't quite quote me on that. Uh, but obviously, there's 60 garages at Le Mans. Take away the uh, garage 59 car. Um, so I believe there'll be 59 in total rather than 60. And the others, I think there was 32 cars that ran last season. So I imagine it's 32 for most of them. Uh, Christian saying Ferrari, but which Ferrari? That is the question. Oh, we got... Oh, it's even. 3-3. It's three, three. All right, we'll do P2 because uh, Barry hasn't seen any LMP2 footage as of yet. And yes, they do sound absolutely fantastic as well. So there's a whole bunch of liveries here for us to choose from, uh, which is rather nice. But... Uh, 
Astobo, this is done by uh, Studio 397, so the guys who did uh, R Factor 2 and uh, Motorsports Games is the uh, is the publisher. That's quite a nice livery, DKR Engineering. It's Europol, we've got Jota. Pretty cool there. Some racing. Promo cars. I'm probably going to have to go Team WRT. Right. So turning that off. 18 minute race. Oh, this might be fun. Looks like we got a uh, wet weather set up for. Uh, the race, which would be cool. Alright, I'm going to turn this down. So I think this could be uh, <clears throat> part of the reason for some of the issues that we've uh, we've been having. Let's go ahead and jump in. I heard the AI was customizable. Is this true? I'm not entirely sure at this point. I don't think it is. I know in R Factor 2 it was, but obviously there's... Uh, there's a lot more car classes and uh, a lot more different cars that are available on offer in uh, in R-Factor 2, whereas obviously this is just purely World Endurance Championship and the cars that ran in that. So I don't think, from what I've seen, that it is customizable, but it might be come the final release. That's a feature that they could probably add in uh, at some point. But uh, I don't think, I haven't seen it here in, uh, in early access. And indeed, Motorsport Games has finally uh, launched a licensed title. I believe they snatched up three or four official licenses. Yes, they did. NASCAR, uh, British Touring Car, IndyCar, and uh, World Endurance Championship. They released the NASCAR one. I know how that went. And then they binned the British Touring Cars and IndyCar. I know uh, R Factor 2 has obviously had the British Touring Cars come out as DLC, but uh, I believe that was meant to be a fully licensed game with that one. And then uh, finally, they've uh, released Le Mans Ultimate. And yes, the loading times are really, really long. Uh, this is the first time loading the track. Generally, once you've loaded it into a track once, all the assets, shaders, and everything else like that uh, are created. And uh, they effectively get cached on you to your system. So it makes future um, loadings a fair bit quicker. Right, here we go. Things seem to be running a lot, lot smoother now. So you can see here a whole bunch of stuff that we can adjust. We can put tape over the water and uh, oil radiators. We can quite heavily reduce the amount of fuel that we're going to be taking because I don't think we needed quite as much as we needed. Good thing so far, one of the things that we do have is we have setups on not necessarily a per track basis, but probably types of track. So I know that... Uh, Certainly Le Mans, when I loaded into that, I was on uh, one rear wing on the Porsche GTE, whereas at Algarve it's like five or six. Uh, the gear ratios are different as well. So I believe we've got some form of uh, setup, uh, per track default setups, which is really, really good. But uh, you can see various different things that we can uh, adjust here. Some of these things probably look a little bit daunting when you first uh, first look at them. But uh, it kind of takes inspiration from the uh, R-Factor 2 UI where you make adjustments and you see here alongside it just how many uh, clicks difference uh, you have made, which is uh, a really, really nice touch. I do like that. You've got obviously spring rates, bump stop packers, ride height, sort of thing, wheels and brakes. Here you can see the outer, mid and inner uh, thirds readings from uh, previous previous runs. And various other little bits and bobs like that. So, yeah. All pretty good. Right, let's go ahead, jump in the cart. Let's get ourselves out on track. Driving the LMP2. And Wesley, you are welcome. Saw your comment. 
Right, let's see how fu good Fuji is. Might be a good idea to actually pay attention to where I'm uh, driving rather than quickly glancing up a chat. This is my first time driving the uh, LMP2 car. To be fair, this is actually my first time driving anything other than the uh, the GTE, so it should be interesting. Brakes are uh, pretty good. Totally sure why I'm not seeing uh, other cars at the moment. I can see them there on the relative, but uh, I'm not actually visibly seeing them out on, out on circuit. All right, here we go. First flying lap. Ties up to a reasonable temperature. So let's see how uh, how we can do. New bumps there. Big lock up. <laughs> the moment driver swaps aren't in so I don't know if the AI do actually perform driver swaps but I know for sure that uh, you, you as a self player cannot however they have said from a lot of their uh, articles and stuff leading up to the release of the early access that they're going to be allowing driver swaps believe between AI but also potentially between players in a single player environment against AI so you and a few buddies can do like the Le Mans 24 hours against AI uh, which is pretty cool something that, that isn't in other games at the moment obviously there are driver swaps in uh, R Factor 2 ACC and I racing but uh, they're only in online game modes. So, with other players, against other players. Alright, I need to break way earlier than that. That was looking like the, uh, the 150 meter board and... too late. Whoopsie daisy. Managed to keep the car running though. But why am I not seeing AI? Let's uh, let's jump back to the garage. There are other AI going around the circuit. There's my spin. Okay, it just seems like there isn't uh, AI in this qualifying session at the moment. Hopefully, we'll see him again when we uh, actually go to the race. And yeah, the cables are very, very good there at the uh, at the dash. Very little uh, vibration from them, and they're looking nice and tidy. Try and generate a bit of heat in the uh, in the tyres. A 
little bit deep that. <clears throat> Maybe I'll refigure out my uh, reference points around this track. Hello, Jurassic Jam. Indeed, the cars are a little bit floaty. It's a little bit difficult to feel what exactly the tyres are doing at times. Now I see why the uh, that 150 board is throwing me off. It's because it's the 100 meter board. The board following it is uh, the 50 meter board. But yeah, the physics aren't too bad. They are floaty in places, especially around Le Mans with uh, the low wing and low downforce setups. But I imagine as the force feedback improves, car setups improve, things will start to feel a bit more planted. That was really, really bad of me now. Pretty absolutely ruin the tyres. But yeah, it's something that they can work on and improve. This is early access, of course. So things will change in the coming weeks, months. They haven't really said as to how frequently there'll be updates. But uh, this will be f this is far from the version 1.0. As I imagine, they'll probably want to have a career mode, time attack mode. Maybe some others as well, some more uh, features. There's no VR at the moment, but uh, it is meant to be coming, so there are still improvements. That have uh, yet to be made. Understeer. A little bit of oversteer as well. <clears throat> so one good thing that I am noticing is the uh, downfalls. You can really tell when the uh, car has got its aero really working at the higher speeds there's uh, quite a bit more turn and a bit more grip whereas those slow speed corners and the uh, the latter half of the lap the car feels a little bit heavier and more cumbersome <clears throat> and yeah the sound is uh, the sound is good oh, I just come back yeah, up into pole And looking up a little bit there. So like through here. Car feels quite nicely responsive and there's uh there's plenty of grip as you can see. They were cooking the surface of the uh surface of the tire, but then down at these speeds it's a little bit more reluctant to uh, tuck into some of the corners. You definitely lose grip by uh, 
taking and hammering the uh, the inside curbs. It's one of the things I don't like about iRacing is just some of the tracks you can really abuse the curves a lot more than you should be able to in the higher downforce cars. Obviously it does have some effect but not all of the tracks have the 3D curves whereas I think Mugello where there are uh, now 3D curves it's a little bit more tricky you have to be a little bit more careful with your car's placement. Uh, keep missing the apex there for turn one. At least we didn't lock up that time. Oh, we're not improving on this lap. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the pits. There you go, practice the pit entry. Change the tyres. See what it does when we put fuel in the car. Move back slightly. Fuel is 12 seconds, tyres are 20 seconds. Obviously, up on the hydraulic jacks. start the car up before we uh, drove off, which I'm not too sure if uh, that is accurate or not, but there is a look at a pit stop. No animations or anything like that as of yet, but uh, that may be coming in the uh, coming in the future, which is quite cool, but uh, let's go ahead and jump to the race. Start next session. Hopefully. It's all loads in, okay. Slowly, slowly. So this is the bit that I think they really need to work on. Is uh, just the performance and kind of the smoothness of some of these menus here in the uh, in the actual game gameplay uh, section. So uh, this is painstakingly slow, but we are now in. See how long uh, this takes to respond here. These things do seem to be uh, quite slow. So if I pause, it all looks rather, rather unresponsive. Oh, here we go. Things are speeding up now. Game's starting to catch up a little bit. Indeed, Benjamin. I agree with you there. Uh, it is nice that uh, we can actually do pit stops in uh, in the qualifying session rather than just jumping back to the pits. Obviously, you can do that, but um, it's nice that the option is there. There are actually quite a few other games actually uh, allow you to do that. ACC allows you to do it, uh, AMS2 and uh, Project Cars 2. 
as well. And even eye racing. I think pretty much <laughs> pretty much every sim allows you to do uh, an actual pit stop during the qualifying session if you really wanted to. It's just everyone just jumps back to the pits because it is so much quicker. Hey, JPS. Hey, Mank. Hope you're both doing good. Yeah, this is... Uh... Dead on me. I did. Yeah, it's being really, really slow. Oh, it's starting to do things now. Maybe. It's slowly catching up. It's not quite there, though. Alright. I'm going to kill the game. We'll relaunch it and we'll go straight into <clears throat> a race session, hopefully with the same settings. And uh, we can drive Fuji again. And JPS, I'm doing all good, thank you. Glad to hear you are well too. Alright, race weekend. Shall we do Fuji or a different game? Uh, different track. I'm almost tempted to do Le Mans. Play with high settings, not ultra. Yeah, I'm on high settings. Uh, even still. She's struggling a little bit. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do... Let's do Le Mans. Do LMP2 again. Take that off. Weather. Rain. Do something like that. This could be quite fun. And I will try the Ferrari at some point, but uh, quite enjoying at the moment. The LMP2. What shall we do? Let's sod it. Let's do the uh, let's do the hypercars. could do the Ferrari. Or we could do the Porsche. Let's not do Toyota, because... Alright, let's do the 75 Porsche. This should be good fun. It'll be interesting to see uh, see how this plays out. Hopefully, the uh, frame race will be all right in the uh, in the wet. We shall see. I'm running a, uh, a 3070, 64 gig of RAM, I believe. It might be 32 actually. Um, obviously, got the game on an SSD and a uh, 5800 X as well. Mixes things up a little bit, JPS. But yeah, indeed, we'll we'll do the we'll do the Porsche. I've seen uh, a few people be driving the Ferrari, uh, whereas I haven't seen anyone driving the Porsche uh, as of yet. So, sorry, Porsche. Yeah, been moaned at by a few people in the past about that. It's because that's British to say Porsche for short, rather than Porsche.
hopefully it'll be fine. <clears throat> Saw Jardier driving in the rain earlier. That looked uh, that looked interesting. Him slipping and sliding about all over the place. So uh, we'll see how much uh, how much we struggle. I can't actually remember how long I set the race race to. We may not do the entirety of the race because I have a feeling it's going to be over an hour long. But uh... oh yeah, we should do a good chunk of it at least. But overall, I'm quite enjoying the game. They've got a uh, a good base to uh, to work from. Obviously, some things to improve and iron out. That is for sure. But uh, the initial base is, is fairly decent. Why are the classes all mixed up? That's a little bit interesting. <laughs> Your neighbor's cockapoo is called Porsche. <laughs> That's quite funny. Yeah, things are very, very slow at the moment. And yeah, the race is an hour and 12 minutes. Yeah, the UI looks clean. I like it. I like the style that it's got. The HUD looks nice. It's all nicely readable. There's nothing um, glaring or offensive. Uh, it's, it's missing the odd little bit of information here and there. Um... Generally, even on this screen, it looks fairly good. It's just uh, some of the animations and stuff are having some real issues uh, with that. As you can see. But uh, it's things that they can tidy up and improve fairly easy. Right, wind up. <laughs> and OBS is dying again. When you skip quality, everything will be mixed. Okay. No. Right. What I wanted was tire management page. Wet tires. There we go. Start driving. All right, car fired up. Hello, Ryan Cullen. So is the P2 in front of us. So we got the proper like Le Mans style start, where the beginning of the formation lap, you're off at a, a jointy angle, and then uh, put away into the formation lap and. Off you go, so that is the car that I'm meant to be following. on the formation lap. Oh, good. Right, let's... Uh... Right. This is not doing what I wanted to do. for the game. Close that down. As uh Yeah, things are a little bit glitchy for you guys. But also it's um I set up some key bindings earlier 
to move the seat around and stuff like that because that positioning there and that Porsche is absolutely horrible. I don't know how I'll drive if it's like, like that. Driving away. So, uh, <laughs> we're going to, uh, reset the key bindings a little bit. Hopefully improve that. Bear with us a very quick second here. Controls. Camera, keyboard. Oh god, okay. So this is all set up how it should be. I don't know why it's doing that. Right. The self. Hypercar. Porsche. Advanced options. Whatever. Light rain. Good cloudy and drizzle. Mostly cloudy. Partial cloud. Let's do that. Want all the car classes on. The 36 minute race, yeah? <clears throat> Sounds good. Hopefully, things are a little bit better with the stream as well. Yep, the uh, error message that I had is, uh, has now disappeared. And uh, JPS, yes, I'm streaming on the same PC. Uh, I don't have a dual PC setup. I do have two PCs, but uh, one's a work PC. <laughs> Always falls a motorsport. No, not quite. I don't have that. Not a game that I have in my Steam library either. So, almost done loading. Grid will be probably jumbled uh, back up again. Good. Glad I'm all back in sync. Hopefully, once we loaded into the game once more, everything will still remain all good. It's the only problem with this game, I think. It's these really, really long wait times on these load menus. really do wish they would be uh, quicker than they are. Apologies there, just having a look at the, uh, I don't want to be starting from P1. That's not what I wanted. There we go, that seeing position's a little bit better. Oh, quite a bit of frame rate. Lag and stutter in here. Now back behind the uh, the pace car again. Oh, 
currently sat about 24, 25 frames per second. Hopefully they'll sort and fix themselves. Is that uh, more stirring issues for you guys? a little bit frustrating so it probably means that I can't uh, actually stream the game which is uh, really quite annoying green green let go 2.5 frames a second A little bit annoying. Oh, that's a big lock up. <laughs> okay, it's really not liking that uh, that circuit for whatever reason. Well, that's really annoying and unfortunate. I do apologise about that, guys. All right. Well, I think the best thing is to probably end the stream there which is a real real shame because i would have liked to have carried on uh, streaming for you guys but yeah it's it's early access it's obviously uh eating and chewing up uh some cpu usage somewhere along the line i can see it uh red bars and i'm dropping frames like crazy at the moment even though i'm no longer actually uh playing the game so probably what i have to do instead is uh spend the rest of this evening recording videos instead uh, to uh, put up on the channel, which isn't a bad thing, to be fair. Um, it's just a shame that uh, obviously me and you guys can't sit, chat and interact as, uh, as we play the game at the same time. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, promising signs if they can sort out some of the uh, performance issues that they're having in, uh, in certain menus. Once they uh, get those sorted, we'll... Uh, be able to stream the game much more easily, I reckon, and uh, it'll make the game a fair bit more enjoyable. I think they need a little bit more, uh, a little bit more content in the game, maybe as well. But uh, there's still plenty there to explore, so uh, plenty of videos to come in the uh, in the very near future. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Until the next video, or. Well, this weekend, in fact, we will be having a, another live stream. We've got the Bathurst 12 hours uh, on iRacing. So uh, keep an eye out for that on Saturday. Probably be going live about 12.30ish or uh, quarter past 12 uh, UK time. And uh, we'll be covering the full 12 hours. Be racing with the geodesic guys as well. So that should be good fun in the GT3 cars. Um, so keep an eye out for that, keep an eye out for the videos and all that good stuff as well. But yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Again, apologies that uh, it's not gone quite as smoothly as uh, we were hoping uh, with some of those performance issues getting in the way. But uh, yeah, it is what it is for now until uh, they release some updates and fixes some issues. But uh, until the next time, have fun, stay safe and take care.